Number one asks us or shows us the dot plot displays the number of bushes in the yards for houses in a neighborhood. And it wants us to find what the median is. So the median is going to be the very middle number of the data set when you write it in order from least to greatest. So one thing you can do is rewrite all of these numbers in order from least to greatest like this. The other, and then work to the middle. The other thing you can do is count up the numbers. So there's count up the number of dots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So then you can take and think about the middle of 20 would be 10, right? So we would have however many, you know, 10 data down here and 10 data here. And then the middle of that is going to be the median. So we could count up 10 data points here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so if we went the other way and counted 10, we would end up at 8 as well. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 means that our, medi our median is really here at 8. And you can do that with this data too. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then the other way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then when there's two numbers in the middle for the median, you take the average of them. But if they're both the same number, it's just going to be that number. So what you would really do is do 8 plus 8 divided by 2, which is 16 divided by 2 which just gives you eight. So the median is eight. Number two gives us a data set that represents the shoe sizes of 19 students in a fifth grade physical education class. Create a box plot to represent the distribution of this data. So for a box plot, we need a five number summary. So we need the minimum, we need our quartile one, we need our median, we need our quartile three and we need our maximum. So in order to do this, I like, I mean, you can start with the min, right? So the min is four, the max is nine. That's pretty easy to see when it's written least to greatest. Then we need to go in and find the median. So when we're thinking about 19, when we're splitting this, this would be like nine numbers, nine numbers, and then we'd have that one middle one as um, the 19th because 9 plus 9 is 18 plus 1 is 19. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this one's going to be the median. And certainly you can, you know, work yourself side to side and just cross off until you find the middle two. You don't have to, you know, divide it out like this. Either way, what you want to do is find the middle. So then this is your median right here. So your median is 7. Then your Q1 and your Q3 are the middles of the um, first half and second half of the data. So now we're going to take and find the middle of these numbers. Okay, so then that's 10 numbers there. So we need to go to the middle. So that's going to be 5 in, right? So again, you could go like this. Um, and just find the middle this way. So here's our middle two numbers, which are the same. So this Q1 is six. And then you can do the same thing in the top half of the data. So going into the middle, and we find um, this to be the middle. And so we would find the average of this. So 7.5 plus eight divided by two, and we get 7.75 for that one. So then what you want to do is um, create like create your, your box plot. So I like to start with a number line. And we just want to make sure we have numbers um, 4 to 9 on there. And try to space these out fairly similarly. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So then you put a minimum dot and a maximum dot. So we'll just go above here. So four is the minimum, nine is the maximum. Then at each quartile, you want to draw a straight, a vertical line. So at quartile one, we'll draw a vertical line. At the median, we'll draw a vertical line. 
And then at the um, quartile three, we'll draw a vertical line. So that's 7.75, so just a little bit before eight. And then we end up, this makes our box in the middle. And then you make these branches out to your, to your min and max. So you can do it all in one color, obviously. I'm just doing it in different colors so you can see, but then there's your box plot. Number three, we have a data set that represents the number of pages in the last book read by each of 20 students. So we know we have 20 data points in here. Um, and here they are, 163 to 431. This time we're gonna create a histogram. And histograms, we end up grouping the data in um, different ranges. So you can decide kind of what you want your range to be here. I'm going to do it. It goes from the hundreds to the 400s. So I'm going to group mine in 100 pages. Again, you could do you could do different things. So I'm going to do everything in the 100s as a category. So that's going to give me and I'm just going to count it up so I know my vertical measure here. So in the hundreds, I have one, two, three, four, five people that read in the hundreds um, for the 200s. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Three hundreds. I have one, two, three, four, five, six people. And then the four hundreds, I have two people. So that tells me that my vertical measure needs to go up to seven. So I'm just going to make this a little bit longer here. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm just going to put mark that one at five. And then I'm going to start at, um, I'm just going to put a space at zero. I'm going to put this at zero. And then this will be 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And then we'll just mark this off. So now there's five different data points in the hundreds. So for 100, I'm going to go from 100 to 200 goes five data points. So then you just draw um, a little like tower here. So then there's our part of the histogram for that. And you don't have to do this different colors again. I just am. So from 200 to 300, that's going to go up to seven because that has seven data points in that part. For 300, I had six data points, so that's going to go about here from 300 to 400. And then between 4 and 500, we had two data points, so that's going to go to about here. So you can just kind of look and make sure that your height goes the number of data points that were in there. And then that would be your histogram. Number four, each set of data was collected from surveys to answer statistical questions. Select all data sets that represent numerical data. So we're looking for numbers. So as long as it has numbers, it's going to be numerical data. Words, not numerical. So all of this would be numerical data. These are not. Number five, what is the typical distance a moped can be driven on a single take a tank of gas? Is that a statistical question? So remember, statistical means that there's variability in the answer. There's It's not just one exact answer. And so for this one, typical leaves it up to variability. So this one is, so yes. Um, because there's variability, because the answers or the data varies. The way it would be not statistical if it, is if it said, how far did your moped drive on your last tank of gas? Because then there's an exact answer that happened here. But when it says words like typical, usually, that means it's um, going to be a statistical question and there's going to be variability.